Hi, welcome to Jesus on the Fly. Hi. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the golden rule, it looks like. We're in Matthew 7, 12, and we're going to read through 20. Matthew 7, 12 through 20. And we just talked a lot about asking and receiving last week, and the week before that, judging and not judging others. So, all right, you want to read it? All right, yep. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Okay, awesome. So the first thing that sticks out to me for this is in verse 12. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. Um, and so one thing that I never noticed about that, you know, we hear people say that the golden rule is do unto others as you would have them do unto them. But the last part of that sentence, for this is the law and the prophets. And so I think that's really interesting because I feel like that is the law. Like, mm -hmm. you know, follow the commandments is the law. But mm -hmm. what it doesn't say is like, but the gospel is do more than what others would do to you. You know what I mean? Like, don't make your actions dependent on what other people do. Instead, give more grace. Like, give mm -hmm. forgiveness. You know, love your enemies. Um, so it's just interesting mm -hmm. to me that that's equated to the law and the prophets. And that's not wrong. That's good. But what's better is the gospel. You know, mm -hmm. am I going yeah. too far with that, you think? Or do you think well, that's like... I mean, it is different, but I think, you know, like when I think of the the law and the prophets or Jesus saying that, it's kind of like Jesus, similar to sayings where he says, like, what is what is the, the greatest commandment? You know, love the Lord with all your heart and soul and mind and love your neighbor as yourself, which is essentially love your neighbor as a self is pretty much the same. Um, well, I'm not saying, but it's in the same area of what he's talking As about. As do unto others. Yeah. yeah and then, yeah. and then, you know, like even in the catechism, it's like, what's the summary of all the commandments? Love. Right. You know? Right. So. Yeah. But I, think I don't know though. That's like, a little bit more though than just like kind of give love is people, more give back to you right because yeah. what if like if people i mean how many people in the world out there don't give love you know this would say like um go um and give people what they give you and we know from the entirety of scripture that there's more to that than that you know that jesus doesn't give us what we give to him you know instead he gives us love which is much more than we give him most mm -hmm. days you know most yeah. moments and so mm -hmm. i think you have to keep that in mind i guess always scripture in the context of all of scripture um but i do appreciate that uh there is a place for you know recognizing our interactions with other people instead of just like oh we live in this fake world and we're just mm -hmm. trying to make decisions and yeah. you know i think that's helpful yeah. um I don't know. So narrow gate. Think, Any thoughts on the narrow and wide gate, Dave? Um, I mean, the biggest thing that I think of is a lot. Of, there's a lot of avoidance and escape from problems. Like, you know, I think in our, I don't know if that's our culture. Maybe it's always been like that or whatever. But like, you know, when the going gets tough, you know, the tough gets the tough going. Get going. I always have these like really cheesy sayings. Dave is like, a cliche. You know, cliche but no, I like what you're saying though. Is like, I never thought about that. When the going get tough, the tough like escape to somewhere else because yeah, they can't right. deal with they it. just yeah. escape, you know. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, I, I guess there's, there's sometimes I think, oh, this is a great solution because I feel so much peace in my heart because I'm completely avoiding it. <laughs> and that's just not, <laughs> not the right it. kind of peace. Yeah. Like that's mm -hmm. not the right kind of like feeling you should have settled in yourself 
I mean, some you know, there's you have to balance it, but like you can't just go by the, fe- feeling. the feeling yeah. of like, oh, that's gonna feel great for me to just go and just Be disappear. Done. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. you just can't live a life like that. And then I, and then I think when you come down to like the hard questions of life, like, you know, are you going to, um, like, you're gonna come to the conclusion of the hard reality that you're a sinful person. Um, and that you need God's forgiveness, or are you going to go the easy way and say, oh, I'm fine, it's not going to I'm better than most people. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I feel like that's a really like, common response. That it's we have. like, you know, it's all right. Whatever, yeah. You know. Yeah. I do so. like that the passage also, because we connected like the next section and didn't pay attention to the subtitle, it talks about the wolf in sheep's clothing. And so I do think it's really helpful as it tells us, like, there will be people trying to tell you like to go away that's not me jesus says you know there will be people Mm -hmm. and i'm not even talking about other religions i think the wolf in sheep's clothing in scripture is pretty clearly like people within christianity like telling you that this is what jesus looks like this is jesus's message when you always have to go back to the word to hear what he actually says which is what we're currently doing and i also think he talks about how it's going to sound attractive, but look for the fruit. And to look for the fruit, you have to get to know people. Like you can't, you know, just listen to the pastor's message on Sunday and be like, oh, that just sounded so great or whatever. And you feel it in your heart, like inspired and stuff. You have to get to know that person that you're hearing truth and love from and know, Mm -hmm. I think, whether that's genuine um, and I mean, I'm not trying to just hold pastors up under a certain standard. I think the same is true of like our friendships and things too. Mm-hmm. If we're giving advice to each other, if we're talking about yeah. life, what, what do we truly see in these people? Um, you know, mm-hmm. is it the word or is it mm-hmm. something else? Yeah. I guess we'll know by the fruit. I think, um, <laughs> Another cliche. Talk is cheap. Like, it's like, you know, you can say a bunch of stuff, but like the real heart behind it is that, is that truly, um, you know, does it have the right motives or is it producing like what it says it's supposed to produce? Like Mm -hmm. I, I even, I've heard different people. Well, most of the time, like people are really nice to me, but yet they're not like, you know, they're just like saying nice things to me to try to like make me think that they're, that they, you know, have my best interest in mind. And I mean, I've gotten burnt by different people and I'm like, wow, I can't believe that person was like actually kind of out to get me this whole time. Like it was really, really disturbing. But, but like, um, you know, that's the warning, right? I mean, we have the warning to watch out for those people. So, yeah, I think that's a really like practical insight that the Bible gives us too. Um, not just about like people trying to mess with the gospel, but people just trying to mess with our hearts and lives, you know. And in the end, that does mess with the gospel, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, I think that's a helpful message to just mm-hmm. be aware. Like when you're interacting with people, there's a place for both you know, forgiving love and um, all of this, but there's also a place for justice and boundaries and all that. And I think that's one thing that Jesus mm-hmm. tells us here. Yeah, that's true. Awesome. All right. Do you want to pray us mm-hmm. out or do you have any? Um, do you want to pray us out? I can. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your word. We thank you that there's a place to go back to for us to understand uh, the narrow way um, as opposed to the wide way. We also appreciate that you are there in all of our relationships and that you guide us with your word so that we know, you know, words and actions and all of that and how they fit together. Um, and that we do make mistakes, um, but you always forgive and are ready to help us walk through um, our struggles and also have more grace for us every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. We'll see you next week.